Hi, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV. Today, we're going to try and reach that Crystal Palace in the lower right corner there, so let's go. Let's see. Ah, there's a chest up there. No! Monsters! There's nothing too special about these guys, just, um... They're pretty vanilla enemies. I, I guess they can poison you with their physical attacks sometimes, but just have ready a cast quake and that'll knock them all out. It's a very fast, efficient spell. Takes out just about anyone you'd care about at this point. Yay. Good experience on the moon, too. And we get a golden apple, which obviously I'm going to use on Radia. So let's give that to her. And keep moving forward. Okay, now here's a couple other new enemies. Uh, Abyss Worm and Dark Grenades. Uh, Dark Grenades are um, another enemy that you can win the bomb summon from. And uh, Abyss Worms are susceptible to fire, but in this case, I'm not going to uh, use that weakness. What I want to do is I want to get to Rydia's turn and cast a weak bolt spell on one of them. And there we go. And what that'll do is it'll cause a chain reaction, killing all the enemies in the battle, making it much easier. I was actually already aware of that, but someone reminded me of that too, so thanks a lot. Let's keep going then. And we got a couple chests here. And these contain a moon curtain and the stardust. Uh, the moon curtain is uh, slightly better than the light curtain. I mean, yeah, it does cast reflect on the use on whoever uses it, but the moon curtain's effect lasts longer, supposedly. And Stardust casts Little Media, which is obviously way too weak at this point in the game. So let's uh, get out of here. The path is pretty straightforward from here, so let's just keep going. And here's another new enemy, Lunavirus uh, and Pudding. Uh, nothing too special about them. Um, none of them are weak to anything. But um, obviously the uh, Puddings have perfect physical defense, so I'm going to have Edge cast Ragin on them. It's his strongest attack. And it kills all of them. Yay! I'll take a moment to heal and be right back. And just head down there. And this is a perfectly straightforward path here. I like how this music's kind of the same, well, it is the same as uh, when you got on top of uh, Mount Ordeals there when Cecil became a paladin. Kind of an interesting touch there. You'll find out why that is very shortly. There it is. Okay, we finished that battle, so let's enter this palace, the home of the Lunarians. Who are those people? Let's find out. But first, let's check this place over here. And this is going to restore our MP. Yay! Just like back at the uh, Castle Dam sign. And this one, I would assume, restores our HP and status. All right. There's one th weird thing about this place, though. Monsters! And this one is another hidden chest that contains two demon soldiers who, for some reason, only use stone gaze over and over again. But we're not going to finish them or fight them. Interestingly enough, they never use Stone Gaze in their normal attack sequence. Uh, I don't know why, but th this works here, but not there, you know? But, eh, who cares? Welcome. It's got a nice strobe lighting effect. Don't tell me the Lunarians invented disco. Oh, man.
Who are you? Can you hear me now? Fusoya, guardian of the Lunarians. They came from a planet that was destroyed between the... Oh, it was the asteroid that became the asteroid belt. Oh, wow, that makes sense. Sort of. Built a ship, traveled to the blue planet, but they had to hibernate for survival. Oh, they're talking about the Earth. Okay. They created another moon and continued sleeping. Well, if you created another moon, why couldn't you just create an entire planet for that sake? But, eh. One of the Lunarians refused to sleep. Wanted to kill everyone on the blue planet. How awful. He was a brilliant but impatient man. He became bitter and vengeful. Created the Tower of Babel to give mankind the tools to destroy themselves. Of course, he could have given us a few uh, atomic bombs, but, you know, that would have been too complicated. He forced him to sleep, but his mind is still awake. Consumed with hatred, he increased his psychic powers. Sealed below the surface of the moon, he uses his powers to control those with a dark soul. So Golbez is just a puppet of him. Who is this guy? Zemus. He's got the power of suggestion power. The crystals are their source of energy. Oh, so why do we have some crystals then? Oh, well. He uses the, the crystals to activate the dimensional elevator in the Tower of Babel to bring down mankind's doom. The giant of Babel. That's what the way to the moon is? Okay. The rest of us aren't like that. Wait until the blue planet were advanced enough to speak with us, which would be now, and share our culture together. We dreamed of that day. What about the magical ship? His younger brother, Kluya, made it to the blue planet. Oh, okay. He was enthralled with our world, wanted to aid our evolution. And he built the Devil Road, gave us airships. Yeah, and look how that turned out. Nice job, Kluya. He founded Mysidia and bore two children. One of them was Cecil. So that would make Fusoya my uncle? Hmm, okay. Oh, the voice on Mount Ordeals was Kluya himself. Oh, so he was literally his father, not figuratively. Okay. Well, there we go. He gave us the power to stop Zemus. Well, actually, he gave us the power to stop Golbez, but same difference. Hurry to the Tower of Babel. But it's surrounded by an energy barrier. He can neutralize the barrier. I shall go with you. Yay! And we get another party member who's only slightly better than Tella. Although he does have every white and black magic spell in the game, he hardly has the MP to use very much of it. He does even have Meteo and Flare and some other good spells that we're going to make use of. So uh, let's equip him appropriately. Oh, wait. No, not that. I don't care for him having a boost in his um, willpower there. So I'm going to give him the Fairy Rod to boost his wisdom. That'll hop out his uh, black magic a lot. And then... Oh! No, I don't want that. Let's uh, move our party members around. So that way uh, the three mages are in the back row and we've got the warriors in the front row. So um, that's all for this episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy IV. Next time I'm going to explore more of the Home of the Lunarians and uh, find out some other things that we can do on the moon while we're here. So this is H.C. Bailey signing off. Have a good day.